In recent months I've been sailing in all sorts of locations within a radius of no more than two or three days drive from home. I sailed to Watumba Creek on Fraser Island in our newly restored Sonata 6 and followed up with a trip to the Keppels group of islands off the coast of Yapoon. Then for a change of pace I just finished a three-part series on an open dinghy cruise to the upper reaches of the Noosa River known as the Noosa Everglades. You can find these stories easily by subscribing to this YouTube channel. I wanted to create something with plenty of sailing action in Moonlight since I finished replacing some of the running rigging on Moonlight's Gunter rig a while back and as yet have not tested it out. The Marucci River is literally right on my doorstep and at high tide it's an ideal spot for a shakeout sail. Just two kilometres from my driveway is a new $1.4 million two-lane boat ramp at Nojour Road. It's an absolute ripper for boaties and includes a floating pontoon walkway, a sealed bitumen car park with 45 trailer and car spaces and connecting pathways. I was waiting for around 20 knots or so, typical of the southeasterly trade winds at this time of year. But eventually, I settled for a fresh northwesterly that sprang up around dawn a few days ago. So I spontaneously leapt out of bed at 4.30am and promptly prepared Moonlight for her shakeout sail on the Marushi River estuary. Heading downstream towards the rising sun announces the first signs of the forecast breeze as it lightly ruffles the surface of the river. I know a nice spot on the eastern end of Chambers Island where sand islands are exposed nearly to the top of the rising tide. They provide a safe haven for multitudes of seabirds. There I can set up the camera on shore and catch moonlight in the fascinating early morning light. Maruchidor is a coastal town on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland. Its name comes from the Aboriginal word Murakuchi, meaning red bill and referring to the black swan. But personally I haven't seen more than the occasional swan in our whole 11 years here. Maybe they've moved a little bit further south. There is an intriguing contrast between the southern banks of the river, which have been built up with apartment blocks stacked up to 14 storeys high. Each of the little boxes tries to snag its own little piece of the magnificent outlook across the river to the mangrove clad northern shores which provide a pleasing visual relief from human activity. Love 
that we all came from It's wit now turn I've always loved the scientific name of the Australian pelican, Pelicanus conspicuatus. Pelicans are often seen around the Sunshine Coast, where they can be seen roosting on the sandbanks in the estuarine waters of the Marucci, dipping their comprehensive bills into the water to catch fish. One of my wife's favourite games is to count the number of pelicans perched aloft on the lighting towers of the Marucci Bridge on the Sunshine Motorway. Sometimes there are none to count. When monsoonal rains flood the salt lakes in the parched inland of Australia, many pelicans take advantage of the conditions and flock there in their thousands to breed. When the lakes dry out, they return to their roosts on top of the lighting towers. Pelicans often hunt as a collaborative group. A flock of pelicans works together, driving fish into a concentrated ball. The fish are herded into shallow water and surrounded in ever-diminishing circles. The shoreline that stretches east of the boat ramp is an off-leash area for dogs as far as Pincushion Island, and there are many dog owners that take advantage of this by taking an early morning walk. It does create some interesting results when you're setting up your camera on the shoreline to capture some sailing action.
The Maruchi River descends from the eastern slopes of the Blackhall Range and flows east through Yamundi before entering the sea at Cotton Tree. The named islands in the river include Pincushion Island, Goat Island, Channel Island and Chambers Island. Pincushion Island guards the northern access of the river where it meets the sea. It used to have a shallow gutter in our first years living on the coast, but the channel has long since been cut off by a build-up of sand, and now the island can be easily reached on foot, providing a slightly elevated place to take in the charm of the river mouth. There are also several unnamed low-lying sand islands exposed at low tide, so sailing is best done towards the top of a rising tide. The sand moves around a lot, despite attempts to keep the channels flowing, and the beach is covered with fine white silica using dredging equipment. The bar itself can best be described as fickle. When the swell is low, below half a metre, and the tide is high, entering and exiting over the bar is safe, providing you keep a watchful eye. I've done that a couple of times, but the challenge is re-entering in a slow displacement boat on rising swells that are typical of the afternoons. For that reason, when I want to get out into the open ocean, I drive the 10 minutes south to the Malula River boat ramp, where the mouth is protected by a long rock wall and well-maintained channel. If you have a tinny and know how to operate it safely on a bar, the window where the Maruchi is safe is a lot wider than for slow displacement holes. There are several sandbars on the inside of the mouth of the river where swells reform and break, sometimes quite unexpectedly. You need to keep your eyes open in a boat like Moonlight, because unlike 40,000 locals, she doesn't like to surf and has a tendency to broach. We did that on the notorious St Helens Bar in Tasmania in the 80s, dumping three little kids into the Tasman Sea. They all had life jackets on and we washed safely up in a pile of flotsam and jetsam on the shore to the relief of onlookers. There's a video on the channel about this misadventure and if you subscribe it's easy to find. One of the gems of the Sunshine Coast is the Cotton Tree Caravan Park. It sits right on the beach on the southern banks at the mouth of the river. So far it has survived the eyes of the developers, keeping the skyline low and creating a delightful spot for families to gather and celebrate seasonal holidays in paradise. I can think of no better location to enjoy if you have a small sailing boat, paddleboard, kayak or windsurfer. I'm thinking this year will be a great celebration after a very tumultuous 2020. Next day his wife took a razor Shaved off every hair on his head Looked at his face and said I love you just the same As they wandered swiftly back to bed You know sometimes I wonder if there's a reason life gets so hard Well maybe you find what would hold you together and there were pillow tops when they couldn't sleep And there were tear tracks flipping from their cheeks Fighting for no reason at all With a helping hand to pick up They were sat down and waiting After six long months had gone by And they got the news that the cancer reduced And he was gonna be alright As he started to wish And she kissed him on his head He said he loved her and he was finally Doubts he ever had. Well, oh, sometimes I wonder if there's a reason life gets so hard. Well, maybe you find what holds you together when things try to tear you apart. 
When I started out, the tide was running in at full strength, but after arriving at Cotton Tree, it had turned, and I was now trying to tack up wind against two to three knots of current. This made it difficult to finish the lap around Chambers Island, so Plan B kicked in, and I jived to head back across the, to the channel on the northern side, where there's more room to throw a few tacks in, heading back to the launching ramp at Nojua Road. About now the wind had strengthened quite a lot, picking up to 20 knots, which is heaps of fun in moonlight, but it does mean that I need to put a reef in the main. I was about to learn that my Cobra is only rated to 20 knots max. This is 
possibly where the simplicity of a lug rig may have some advantages. But I'm happy with my sliding gun to set up, with its many bits and pieces to tinker with that makes you feel like a sailor of old. Kids love this old boat. A while back I was beached on one of the sand islands when a group of four or five little kids swam to the island to check us out. They were exhausted and little Timmy in particular had resorted to laying on his back and kicking to the chorus from his mates of, you can do it Timmy. I didn't fancy Timmy's chances of making it back to the shore where his anxious mum and dad were looking a bit perplexed. So I loaded them into moonlight and they enjoyed a short sail back across the river. I reckon their adventure created a lifetime memory of the day they were rescued in a pirate boat. When you reef the main you get this kind of an effect if you don't change the point where the halyard is lashed to the gunty yard. It lays off to leeward creating a gaff like effect, turning its three sided sail into four and spilling some of the excess wind in the gusts. Raising the lashing point sorts this out and returns it to its intended design. Building new desire to go 